Wow, 2020, what a year. It was definitely a year that was transformative for everyone. And everyone had the unique stories of how they dealt with the year that was 2020. It was also a year that was transformative for the engineering profession, where essentially overnight went from working from the office to working from home. I haven't actually been back to the office since March in 2020. This transformation of the engineering profession is also likely to progress through the rest of our career life. We will have some level of work from home. So it's really a changed environment for everyone. Now with the new years upon us, it's time to make those new year's resolutions, both personally and professionally. And I'm going to go through some of my mistakes that I've made, I've seen others make. They'll help you write those new year's resolutions and hopefully make you a better engineer and more passionate about structural engineering. And at the end, I include some of my personal goals so you can help keep me accountable for the year to come. Anyway, let's get into it. Something that I see a lot of young people, especially early on in their career, is thinking they know everything about engineering. And this is due to a little known effect known as the Dunning-Kroger effect. And if you haven't heard of it, it'd be worth looking up. But here's a brief description about it. As you can see about the graph here, confidence peaks really early on in your career. And that's when you think you know everything. However, there's a big breadth of knowledge that you still need to know. As you can see here, through level of knowledge that you know and level of confidence, you have this spike early on, which you never actually achieve later on in your career. So when you starting to have those doubts about your structural knowledge, this is a good sign as you've started to push past this point, hopefully, and starting to learn about what you do not know, as there's a big breadth of knowledge that you need to pick up. And as you're starting to become essentially that guru of structural engineering, you still don't have that confidence as you still know there's a lot of unknowns as there's so much knowledge to know in structural engineering just about the materials, how they behave, and how they interact. It's impossible to know everything. Push past that critical point of that peak confidence should be something you should set, especially early on in your career. That's where I bring on to my second point, which is improving your study. Study, study, study. This is something that I'm a big proponent of, as structural engineering is a big breadth of knowledge, and you should be trying to study every single year to get that knowledge up, to make yourself into a better engineer. One of the biggest mistakes I see, especially for young people, is thinking they should always learn everything on the job. What you gotta realize is, when you're learning and becoming a better engineer, this is for yourself, as you have not signed up for a 10 year course to stay with the same company. So by improving your skills, you're making yourself more saleable. That's not for the company, that is for yourself. And if that company doesn't value you for what you're doing, you can always leave and move to a better company to create those goals of where you need to see. You should also focus on the study on what you want to do and what do you like doing. On the early on in your career, so if you're designing slabs, focus around slab design, skill design, column design, load rundowns, or even programming. So not only focusing on the skills that you need to improve to be a better engineer, but also seeing where you want to see your career go to make sure you're building up the assets you need to head their career in the direction that you want to be focusing on. Work-life balance is extremely important for any structural engineer as we always have these clients on the back end, push, 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 trying to shorten those deadlines down to really critical time lines. So setting clear boundaries is extremely important. Yes, there is some level of overtime that you need to put in. However, ensuring that you're limiting them to non-excessive hours because you do not want to be putting in 15, 20 hour days every day of the week. As this will do two things, it will definitely lead to burnout that will either lead you to be quitting the company, quitting the profession, or just slowing you down as an engineer. It also doesn't give you the time to wind down or to study that additional material to make you a better engineer as well. Setting clear boundaries is extremely important. This is something personally I need to work on as well, especially with the blurred lines that have occurred since working from home. This has become even more relevant. So this is something that I think every engineer should have in their goals, is setting some clear lines and work-life boundaries to make themselves not only into a better person, but also a better engineer and be more effective when they're at work. Feedback has become more critical, especially with the transformation of the engineering profession. So this has become harder without that face-to-face -face that's occurring from day to day. So what you should be doing is actually seeking that feedback. Talking to people, talking to your managers, talking to your junior staff, seeking feedback about how you can be better. This is especially more critical with that change of workplace is you do not have that face-to-face -face feedback. So improving that communication, so turning on those cameras when you are talking to someone to get that personal effect. And you should also be seeking that feedback from not only people that are going to agree with you, but potentially people that are going to disagree with you. 
but as it may be able to give you some good advice to help progress your career faster. And when you do get that feedback, whether that's positive or negative, treat it as a gold, as a, something that you can try and work on to become better. So you should be actively trying to seek that feedback as much as possible, wherever you can, as it will see those blind spots that you have actually missed to make you a better engineer. 2020 has also given us time to reconsider our career goals and professional goals. So you should also look back on that as well. So where do you want your career to go? Do you want to be focused on the next promotion? Or do you want to be looking for more flexibility in your work hours? It's definitely made it harder and harder to see where, especially the engineering profession is going. And can you seek those additional pay rises? So essentially looking at additional benefits that you'd be potentially going for. So if you do want more work-life balance, is it talking about your manager and trying to negotiate some additional flexibility in your hours? As for my New Year's resolutions, one thing I'm going to work on is that time management so I can have more times with the kids and my wife and spend more times around the study and work on this YouTube channel. My study is going to focus on Python programming and automating the mundane, which I'll take you on that journey in some future episodes. As for this YouTube channel, hopefully trying to get one video that has half a million views, a thousand comments, and let's go for two to three thousand likes. Let's see if we can achieve that by the end of 2021. So hopefully this is giving you some insight and some ideas that you can have for your New Year's resolutions, especially around your career. Please comment below your New Year's resolutions as this has likely helped us as a community and give other people ideas as well. And if you did like this video and you have made this point, smash that like button for that YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed at this point, you clearly like the content I'm doing. So smash that like button and to get all the updates, you need to ding the bell. Anyway, here's to 2021 and look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.